Hello everyone and welcome to the week 7 for our course Systems Integration and Architecture. This week, we will focus on designing systems integration solutions and enterprise integration patterns. By the time that you're watching this video, I hope that you're all safe and healthy. So let's start with our topic. In the previous lessons, you were able to understand what middleware is. It is a type of software that facilitates communication between two or more software systems. It can be simple communication connection between applications, or it can also be as sophisticated as information sharing and logic execution mechanisms. In this lesson, you will further understand how to design systems integration solutions and the different integration patterns. At the end of this discussion, we will be able to define tight coupling and loosely coupled, understand the process of exchanging pieces of data through messages via a channel, understand the things that make up middleware, and develop integration solutions. So let's talk about middleware. Middleware is a technology that allows to move information between multiple systems that may reside within and outside an organization. We have this concept we call message-oriented middleware or MOM. It refers to the queuing software that uses a message as a mechanism to move information from point to point. MOM uses the notion of messages to communicate between applications. MOM also resolves the problem of tight coupling between applications. So what about tight coupling? A great example of tight coupling is a local method invocation. Invoking a local method inside an application is based on a lot of assumptions between the called and the calling routing. Both methods have to run in the same processes, for example, in a virtual machine, and be written in the same language, or at least use a common intermediate language or bytecode. The calling method has to pass the exact number of expected parameters, each using the correct type. The call is immediate. For example, the called method starts processing immediately after the calling method makes the call. Meanwhile, the calling method will only resume processing when the called method completes, meaning the invocation is synchronous. The communication between the methods is immediate and instantaneous, so neither the caller nor the called method have to worry about security in the form of eavesdropping third parties. All these assumptions make it very easy to write well-structured applications that break functionality into individual methods to be called by other methods. This is an example problem for a tight coupled solution. Assume the team is developing an online banking system that allows clients to deposit funds from another bank into their account. Only the person's name and the amount are required as inputs from the remote function to deposit money into their account. The front-end web application must be linked with the back-end financial system that handles fund transfers in order to fulfill this job. The TCP IP protocol is the simplest technique to link the two computers. A TCP IP stack can be found in an operating system or a programming library. TCP IP is widely used communication protocol that transmits data between the millions of computers that are linked to the internet and local networks. This simple integration method is quick and inextensive. However, it is brittle since the two parties involved make the following assumptions about each other. First, the platform technology the internal representations of numbers and objects, like for example, 34-bit or 64-bit, the location, uh, the hard-coded machine addresses, the time, all components have to be available at the same time, and lastly, the data format. The list of parameters and their types must match. 
When two people communicate, coupling is a measure of how many assumptions they make about each other. The participants must make a number of assumptions in order to follow the example. As a result, the solution is inextricably linked. Instead of developing a tightly connected solution, the team can use a message-oriented middleware architecture to create a loosely coupled solution. MOM mechanisms offer a variety of services including a common data format and transformer. This removes platform and data format dependencies as the sender no longer has to depend on the receiver's internal data format or the queuing channels. It removes location and time dependencies as team do not have to pay attention to computer identity and the location or whether the other computer is ready to accept requests or not. Removing these dependencies between the systems make the overall solution more tolerant to change, the key benefit of a loose coupling. The things that make up a middleware Middleware are the things that sit between applications. In order to connect two systems via an integrated solution, a number of things have to happen. Applications want to exchange data via messages. Message are a snippet of data that has an agreed-upon meaning to both applications that are to be integrated. The piece of data can be very small, such as the phone number of a single customer that has changed, or very large, such as the complete list of all customers and their associated addresses. When two applications wish to exchange a piece of data, they do so by wrapping it in a message. So we have here the message intent. The command message invokes a function or method on the receiver. The document message enabling the sender to transmit one of its data structures and the event message notifying the receiver of a change in the sender. Returning a response has request reply. This implies that the request is usually a command message and the reply is a document message containing a result value or an exception. The return address is the requestor specifies what channel to use to transmit the reply. On the other hand, the correlation identified pertains to the responder which specifies the request this reply corresponds to. Third is huge amount of data. Message sequence break the data into more manageable chunk and send them as a sequence of messages so that the receiver can reconstruct the original data structure. And lastly, slow messages. The concept of message expiration pertains to that of the sender can specify an expiration date. If the messaging system cannot deliver a message by its expiration, it should discharge the message. If a receiver gets a message after its expiration, it should discard the message. So these four concepts applies when messages are being sent from the sender to the receiver. Again, we have the message intent, returning a response, huge amounts of data, and slow messages. So let's talk about channels. Data needs to be transported, usually across a network. Communication channels are needed to move information from one application to the other. So these channels could be a series of TCP IP connections or a shared file, or even a shared database. A channel is a logical address that both sender and receiver can agree on the same channel without being aware of each other's identity. This application selects a particular channel to send the data knowing that the receiver will be the one that is looking for that sort of data on that channel. In the image you see there, two applications, one is the receiver and the other is the sender, and a channel wherein the message flows into. There are different uh, types of messaging channel. 
And in this slide, we will be looking at the different categories or classifications of messaging channel. First one, we have the point-to-point -point channel. Point-to-point -point channel pertains to the idea to send the data to a single point. It's a one-to-one -one interaction. Next, the publish-subscribe channel. In this channel, the channel effectively copies the data for each of the receivers. This has one too many interaction. Third, the data type channel. All of the data on a channel has to be the same type. It has many to one interaction. The fourth type is the invalid message channel. When receiver receives a message that doesn't meet these expectations, this one handles that. Fifth one is the dead letter channel. For messages which are successfully sent but ultimately cannot be successfully delivered. That is what we call the dead letter channel. The sixth one is the guaranteed delivery. It makes channel persistent so that their messages are stored on the disk. Seventh is the channel adapter. This can be used to connect a channel or a set of channels to the application without having to modify the application. The eighth one is the messaging bridge, connecting two message systems, effectively connecting them into one composite messaging channel. And lastly, the message bus, a backbone providing access to all the enterprise's various and ever-changing applications and functionality. So here we go. We now know the different categories of messaging channels. What about translation? Middleware needs to provide some mechanisms to convert one application's data format in the others. Internal data format of an application can often not be changed. For example, one data format may store the customer's name in two fields called the first name and the last name while the other system may use a single field called customer name. In the image, you see there the depiction of how translation works between application. For message transformation, we have six concepts or things that we need to understand or be familiar with. First one, we have the envelope wrapper. This wrap message payload data into an envelope that is compliant with the requirements of the messaging infrastructure. Next one is what we call content enricher. When the target system requires data fields that, are, that the originating system cannot supply, it has the ability to look up missing information or compute if from the available data. Third one is the content filter. It removes unwanted data from a message, followed by claim check. This removes data from a message but stores it for later retrieval. Normalizers translates messages arriving in many different formats into a common format. And last concept is the canonical data model. It design an independent data model from any specific application. It requires each application to produce and consume messages in this common format. So these are the things that we need to remember in relation to message transformation. Routing. So middleware needs to take care of sending messages to multiple systems. As the number of systems increases, you know, it becomes very tedious and this requires the sending system to have knowledge about all other systems. For example, uh, if the customer address changes in the customer care system, the system can be responsible for sending the data to all other systems that store copies of the customer address. It is expected that each application specific the target systems for the data it is sending over the channel. So you see in the image there, uh, the concept about routing from application to message to channel to routing to translation going to the application. As we move along with the, the discussion, you are seeing different uh, representations of the concepts that we have been discussing. 
So here again, you see the the drawing that has its symbols for message, for channel, for routing, for translation, and the application. What about systems management? You know, integration solutions can quickly become complex because they deal with multiple applications, multiple data formats, multiple channels, routing, and transformation. All these elements may be spread across multiple operating platforms and geographic locations. In order to have any idea what is going on inside the system, it is essential that systems management function be recognized. The subsystem monitors the flow of data, make sure that all applications and components are available, and reports error condition to a central location. In the image there, you see systems management have been already integrated with the different elements in the integration solution. So it becomes complex now uh, by looking at the image of our example. In systems management, here are the things that you need to know. First, control bus. It provides a single point of control to manage and monitor a distributed solution, followed by detour. Route messages uh, through additional steps such as validation or logging with ability to switch on or off these additional steps. The wiretap, on the other hand, inspect the contents of a message without affecting the primary message flow. The message history is a great aid to know where a specific message has been, and the message store can provide a complete account of every message that travels through the system. The smart proxy, on the other hand, track messages sent to request reply services. The test message actively verifying that the running messages or the running messaging system is functioning properly. And lastly, the channel pur purger remove all remaining messages from a channel so that the components under test do not receive leftover messages. So what is endpoint? Most packages and legacy applications and many custom applications are not prepared to participate in an integration solution. Uh, as they were designed to perform specific functionality with specific input and output. Message endpoint is needed to connect the system explicitly to the integration solution. The endpoint can be a special piece of code or an adapter provided by an integration software vendor. So you see their endpoint has been integrated in the application, both the receiver and uh, the sender uh, in relation to our example. So we have different concepts that needs to be understood in terms of the endpoint. Here, we have Messaging Gateway, a class that wraps messaging-specific method calls and exposes domain-specific methods to an application. The message or the messaging wrapper, mapper rather, creates a mapping logic between the messaging infrastructure and the domain objects. The transactional client make the client session with the messaging system uh, transactional so that the client can specify transaction boundaries. On the other hand, the polling consumer explicitly makes a call when it wants to receive a message. The event-driven consumer automatically handles messages as they delivered on the channel. And lastly, competing consumers create multiple consumers on a single channel so that multiple messages can be processed concurrently. In summary, we were able to define tight coupling and loosely coupled. We understood the process of exchanging pieces of data through messages via a channel. We understood the things that makes up middleware and hopefully we can develop integration solutions based from the concepts that we discussed. That ends our week 7 for our core systems integration and architecture. Take care everyone and God bless us all. Thank you.